Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Tuesday, uh, April the 12th. Uh, now, we kind of have the, the start of the playoffs on Tuesday. Um, yeah, the playoffs haven't officially started, but we do have the play-in tournament starting on Tuesday. We have the seven versus eight seed games going on Tuesday night, two-game slate. Uh, we got the Cavs and the Nets playing early at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then, you know, after that game, we have the Clippers and the Timberwolves playing. Now, the way this works, this is basically a win and you're in type of scenario. So the winner of each one of these games becomes the seven seed. The loser actually does get a chance to play again. The loser of these games will get to play the winner of the 9 and 10 games, which are tomorrow on Wednesday. So we have a two-game slate today. We have a two-game slate Wednesday. And I think we have a two-game slate on Friday. There are no games on Thursday, though. Um, but this is basically, you know, the start of the postseason. We're going to start to get some, you know, postseason type of atmospheres. These games are going to be so fun to watch, I'm sure. Um, they should be competitive as well. Like, I think, you know, during the regular season, blowouts were a huge, like, just concern every night you had to worry about blowouts every night you had to worry about is my guy going to play their full minutes well I think we're kind of past that at least I hope you know we might have some some blowouts during the playoffs every now and then but we should get competitive games every night we should get some fun games to watch as well and we got a two game slate for Tuesday so we're going to talk through this two game slate uh, break it down go team by team go through each game and kind of talk through what stands out to me what I do like I'm recording this video a little early recording it um, early afternoon on Monday you know, since it's the playoffs, I would expect for the most part anyone that's healthy is going to play. There are some question marks right now uh, because a lot of guys did sit out, uh, you know, in their previous games on uh, Sunday. A lot of guys rested them, but I would think, you know, pretty much everyone that sat out Sunday should be ready to play today. Uh, we'll talk through everything. Just before we do, guys, hit that like button down below. I always appreciate the likes. If you're new to the channel and you have not yet, click that subscribe button as well. Um, I will be uploading these NBA videos daily. I think uh, moving forward during the postseason, I'm going to try and upload Monday through Friday like I normally do. And I think I'm going to try and upload on the weekends as well. Just because during the playoffs, there's you know only three or four game slates. Like the max amount of games we'll have one day is probably four. So the you know most most games we're gonna have one day is four. Um, so it'll be very easy to make content for these shorter slates. I do want to try and upload during the weekends, and I'll still be uploading you know Prize Picks videos as well. Uh, now if you're new here and you have not checked out Prize Picks yet, they are the sponsor of this video. You can check them out. Uh, link down below in the description, or just when you sign up for Prize Picks, make sure to use promo code Noah. And they will match your first deposit up to $100 now. Um, if you haven't heard of Prize Picks, they're a player prop based DFS site, so it is really simple. You're just picking the over or the under on players' projections. And I will say that, um, you know, for me personally, I've never been a big fan of small DFS slates. You know, two, three, four game slates are just not my thing. I just, I've never been great at them. So I'm going to transition a lot of my action over to Prize Picks during the playoffs. I don't think I'll still be playing, you know, the DFS slates, but I'm going to be playing very light. Um, a lot of my volume is going to be on Prize Picks during the postseason. So, if you want to check out Prize Picks, again, you can sign up with my promo code. You can take a look at the board. They do already have some stuff posted for Tuesday's games, and they even have props up for Wednesday's games as well. Um, so you can take a look at their board, make some picks for yourself. I will have uh, some of my favorite plays posted. Um, might get that video up tonight. If I don't get it up Monday night, then I'll probably upload it sometime early on Tuesday, talking through my favorite plays for these two games and kind of what stands out to me. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead and talk through these two games. We're going to start off with the first game of the night, the Cavs and the Nets. So looking at the Cavs today, Obviously, you know, pretty good matchup here against Brooklyn. Brooklyn this season been a you know fairly bad defensive team. They do play at a pretty fast pace as well. You know, Darius Garland at the top, I think, is firmly in play on this two-game slate. We should expect massive minutes here for Darius Garland. Darius Garland was playing like 38, 40 minutes a night during the regular season. And now with kind of their season on the line, obviously, you know, even if they lose this game, they still get another chance. But basically with it being the postseason now, I would expect huge minutes for Darius Garland. I think he's going to play 40-plus minutes a night moving forward. Um, so I think Darius Garland's going to have a massive role. The minutes are going to be huge. There are other studs you can pay, uh, pay up for today. You have Kyrie and Katie on the other side of this game. You have Paul George. You have Cat. Like, there's plenty of other pay-up options, but I definitely think Darius Garland, even at 9,600, is, you know, totally in play here. Uh, doesn't seem like Jared Allen's going to be ready yet for this game. Uh, just the player bur uh, blurb on DraftKings says that he's not expected to play for Tuesday's playing game. So I'm expecting Jared Allen to remain out. He may be back at some point soon. Um, if the Cavs maybe advance to the next round, then maybe Jared Allen will be able to play then. But it seems like for this game specifically, he won't be able to play, you know, which should mean a pretty big role for Evan Mobley. We've seen Evan Mobley have big games this year when Allen's been off the floor. And in this pretty good matchup against Brooklyn, um, going up against Andre Drummond, I like Evan Mobley quite a bit today. I think 7,300 is a little bit too cheap for the upside that he has and for the minutes he should play as well. I think Mobley's going to get, you know, 36, close to 40 minutes a night as well. And at 7,300, power forward and center eligible on DraftKings, he's someone that did stand out to me as a, a strong mid-range option at first look. And I will say that, you know, there are 
a lot of studs to pay up for today, but there's not much value. Like you're really, these playoff slates are always going to be tough to find value just because there's never going to be, you know, the, the rotations are going to be tight. You're not going to really get injuries to open up value. So it's going to be tough to find, you know, cheap options on these, you know, playoff slates. So you're kind of, you might have to go more of a mid-range type build. Um, and I think Evan Mobley at 7,300 looks like a good mid-range option. He's very affordable on Yahoo at the power four position. He's only $27 over there. So I like Evan Mobley quite a bit today. He's probably one of my favorite plays on Cleveland. Then you have Karis LeVert at 6,900. Um, you know, LeVert's going to play pretty big minutes as well. Now he's been a lot more inconsistent this season with Cleveland. We've seen him have big games in the past when he was on Indiana, we, when he was on Brooklyn. His role hasn't been as good with the Cavs, but he still does offer a big ceiling. I think he'll be, at this price tag, I think he'll be fairly low owned. So, you know, on a two game slate, it is kind of hard to get different. If you want to play a low owned Karis LeVert, obviously the price tag doesn't make him a standout play, but the upside is still there. So I think LeVert's fine if you want to go there. Not my favorite play though. Kevin Love had the most insane game I've ever seen. I literally tweeted it out. He had 55 DraftKings points in 15 minutes last game on Sunday when they played the uh, when they played the Bucks and the Bucks sat everybody. Kevin Love just went nuts in 15 minutes. He shot 10 for 16 from the field, 8 for 11 from three. He had 32 points, 10 rebounds, two assists, and a steal in 15 minutes. He literally averaged almost four fantasy points per minute. The most insane game I've ever seen in my life. Um, you know, Kevin Love. He has shown big time upside. The minutes are never going to be super, super high for him, but I think he will play probably 25, 28 minutes. I think he'll be a you know consistent part of the rotation in the playoffs. And obviously with the, with the teams you know tightening up their rotations, you're going to see you know not as many guys get minutes. Um, you know they're not going to play as many guys. So we might see Cleveland run like an eight man rotation here. I would think Kevin Love plays like 25, 28 minutes. He obviously has a big ceiling and can get hot from three. He's a productive player when he's out there. So even at 6K, I think Kevin Love's viable. Lori Markkinen at 5,900, I'm not as high on. I think I think the minutes will be there. Um, he should play, you know, probably 30 to 32 minutes here if this game's close. I think Kevin Love maybe offers a bigger ceiling, but the floor for Lori Markkinen is solid. You know, even if he has a bad game, he'll probably still get you like 25, 28 DraftKings points. But on two-game slates, we're probably, you know, we're more looking for ceiling, and I think Kevin Love offers a bigger ceiling. And the rest of the Cleveland guys, like, I just don't know, man. Like, Moses Brown, like, how much is he going to play in the playoffs uh, in this type of, you know, in a tight rotation like this? Like, is he even going to be in the rotation? I would think maybe he plays, like, the backup five and gets, like, maybe 10, 12 minutes, but not really DFS viable. Uh, Rondo probably, you know, gets some backup point guard minutes. Maybe he plays, like, 15, 20 minutes. He's just a dart throw at best. Um, and then, like, I don't think I'm really going to anyone else. Isaac Okoro, they might want out there for defense, but... You know, Isaac Okoro is a really bad point for minute player, just doesn't really have much upside. So that's probably it for me from Cleveland. I think I'd really just kind of be sticking to, you know, Garland, Levert, Love, Markin, and Mobley. Once you get past those five guys, I, I just don't feel great about the minutes for really anyone else or the upside. So let's go ahead and move on to the other side of this game with Brooklyn. And when it comes to Brooklyn, I think, you know, this team is very simple. It's KD, it's Kyrie, and then the rest of Brooklyn, it's hard to get excited about anyone else. But on a two-game slate, we kind of have to look to some of these guys but starting off with uh, KD and Kyrie, I think they're the top payup options here. Um, we know both these guys are gonna just, just going to play massive minutes. During the regular season, you were seeing KD play you know, 40 plus minutes a night. I think he's going to play 40 plus minutes here if it's a close game. Now, 12K, really tough to get there because, like I said, there's just not much value today. If you're playing KD, you're going to you know be forced to play some cheap guys you might not want to play. But obviously, KD has you know the highest ceiling out of anybody. He could put up 75 DraftKings points here, and you know definitely be the highest scoring player on the slate. But given the savings, I slightly lean Kyrie over KD. Normally, when Kyrie and KD you know are priced similarly, I always prefer KD. But I think given the $1,300 in savings and given the lack of value that we have, I like Kyrie at 10-7. I think Kyrie stands out as a solid payoff option here. I like him on Yahoo as well. He's a little bit more affordable than uh, than KD over there. And we've seen Kyrie play, you know, huge minutes as well. I mean, he's been getting 40, 40, you know, 40 plus minutes, basically every competitive game they've been in. 44, 40, 43, 39, 40. I'd expect 40 plus minutes for Kyrie here. Um, we know Kyrie's going to take a ton of shots when he's out there. We know the usage is going to be great. The matchup against Cleveland may not be the most ideal, but KD and Kyrie are just going to have such massive roles. Um, they're going to dominate the usage. That I think both look solid. I definitely, I wouldn't be playing both in the same lineup, but I think picking one of the two is totally fine. And, you know, given the little bit of savings you get dropping down from KD to Kyrie, I like Kyrie quite a bit as a payup option here. He might be my favorite payup option on the slate. Um, but then when you get past uh, the, you know, the top two studs, you have Andre Drummond at 6,500, who's kind of interesting as well. You know, Drummond's minutes have been all over the place lately. He's It's been really tough to predict how many minutes he's going to play. 
on a nightly basis, but the production has not you know gone away. I mean, the production's been great. 41 DraftKings points in 20 minutes, 38 DraftKings points in this matchup against Cleveland. He did that in only 24 minutes. 31 DK points in 20 minutes against Houston. 31 DK points in 18 minutes against Atlanta. Like the the production's been great for Drummond. It's just that you never know the minutes. I mean, 31 one game, then you know 18, 28, then 18. Like it's just it's always tough to predict how many minutes he plays. I would think going up against this Cleveland team that kind of plays big, that's usually going to have one of Evan Mobley or maybe Moses Brown on the floor at all times. You're probably going to want Drummond out there for at least like 24, 25 minutes. Drummond's got that type of ceiling that I look for on a two-game slate. I know he might not project super well at this price tag. I know his minutes might not be. He's not going to project to play a ton of minutes, but Drummond's one of these guys that can put up 40 fancy points in 20 minutes. Um, He's kind of like a Kevin Love, so... At 6,500, I'm kind of interested in Andre Drummond today. I don't think he gets a ton of ownership. I might be wrong there, but I like Drummond quite a bit. Um, he's very affordable on Yahoo as well. I think he looks like one of the better center options on Yahoo at $23. And then once you get past Drummond, you have Bruce Brown at 5,800, who I've not really been on at all this season, especially since KD and Kyrie have returned. Like I really feel like the ceiling for Bruce Brown is just not as high, but He's been proving me wrong. I mean, Bruce Brown has had some huge games, even playing with KD and Kyrie. He's been playing huge minutes as well. He's been a very consistent part of this Nets rotation. It seems like Bruce Brown is locked into big minutes on a nightly basis. Is he going to have a 50-point game, or is he going to have a 25-point game? Well, that's the one question. Um, I think the ceiling is still there just because he is playing so many minutes, and Bruce Brown is one of these guys that can contribute in all categories. He can stuff the stat sheet when he's out there. It's just hard for him. It's it's hard for me to project him as like a top option at 5,800. But when you're playing as many minutes as he is, I'm fine going there. Like I think Bruce Brown's in play today. Uh, seems like Seth Curry is going to play. I think he's uh, he's probable, so he's expected back for this game. You know, Seth Curry's one of these guys that can get hot from three, can have a big game any night as a value option at 4,400. Like I'm not I'm not against him. I think he's fine. I do question the ceiling a little bit, but. He should play 28, 30 minutes, and he's only 4,400, and we're kind of desperate for value today. So uh, Seth Curry's viable. We did just get word that Gordon Dragic is available to play. So Gordon Dragic got ruled out. Then he, then he was announced he was questionable, and now it's announced that he's available to play. So Gordon Dragic will be back for this game. Uh, he's been out for COVID protocols. How many minutes does he pl- uh, play in his first game back from COVID protocols? I would think he gets his normal minutes. I mean, he was out for about a week and a half. I don't think he'll be limited too much. Is he going to be viable today? Probably not, um, just especially with you know the Nets really tightening up their rotation. Like, does Dragic play a ton? Um, maybe not. Like, they might want Kyrie out there. I mean, Kyrie's going to play like 40 minutes. So if Kyrie's playing those huge minutes, I just don't know how much they're really going to play Dragic and Kyrie together. But Dragic probably plays like 20 minutes. He's playable. Um, but that's really it from Brooklyn. I don't think I'm really looking to anyone else. You know, Aldridge or Claxton, which one of those guys gets the backup five minutes? It's probably going to be Claxton. Um, I, I doubt both guys play. So you know, maybe if like Drummond gets in foul trouble or maybe Drummond doesn't play as many minutes as we expect, that can maybe lean to Claxton playing more minutes um, on a two-game slate. If you want to take a shot on Claxton, like I don't hate it. Uh, Kessler Edwards, Patty Mills, like no thanks. Like it, James Johnson might not even be in the rotation. Cam Thomas might not even be in the rotation. So that's pretty pretty much all I'm looking to for Cleveland or uh, for Brooklyn. That's all that I'm liking in this game. So let's move on to the next game. Uh, you know, one thing that's cool is uh, on these two game slates, they have one game after the other, which I really like. Um, it, it kind of annoys me when you when you have like two games going on at the same time. So very cool that uh, the first game of the night starts at seven, and then as soon as that, as soon as that game's over, the next game starts. So we got the Clippers and the Timberwolves. Uh, you know, it's kind of our late night game on the Clippers side. You have Paul George at 9900, who I like quite a bit today. I mean, Paul George. Yeah, we saw him play 34 minutes in the previous game he played. I think that was Saturday against Sacramento. That was a game they won pretty easily, won by 19. I think, you know, they were kind of ramping up Paul George, getting him ready for the uh, for the you know, postseason. He played 29 minutes in his first game back. Then he played 28 minutes. And in the game previous game, he played 34. So I don't think we're really getting any minutes limit for Paul George. I'm expecting 36 to 40 minutes from him. Since he's returned from his, uh, from his injury, I mean, he's been really productive. He's had... Some big games. He had 57 DK points against Utah. He had 57 last game against Sacramento. The production is going to be there. The matchup against Minnesota, I think, is pretty solid. Minnesota's defense, I mean, they've been pretty decent, I want to say, in terms of defensive rating. Um, They've been about middle of the pack in defensive rating, but pace is a huge plus. Whenever you face Minnesota, uh, it's a big-time pace up spot because Minnesota does play at the fastest pace in the league. Uh, The Clippers, I think, are more towards the bottom of the league. They're about middle of the pack. But definitely going to be a fairly fast-paced game. Should be a high-scoring game. Obviously, Paul George, when he's out there, he's going to be super productive. His usage is going to be great. The minutes should be really high. 
So I'm definitely into Paul George today. Then when it comes to the rest of the Clippers, like this is a tough team to like, it's a tough team to really predict what's what they're going to do just because we've seen Ty Lue be so hot handy. You know, some games Reggie Jackson will play 40 minutes. Some games Reggie Jackson will play 20 minutes. Like you just never know. Ty Lue does have other guys he can turn to. Like if Reggie Jackson's not playing well, he can just give more minutes to, you know, Terrence Mann or to Norman Powell. Um, if Zubac's not playing well, he can just turn over to Hartenstein. If Marcus Morrison isn't playing well, they have Robert Covington they can give minutes to. Like, they have other guys they can play. I think, you know, the Clippers are probably going to run, like, a 10-man rotation here as Paul, with Paul George, Reggie Jackson, Zubac, Morris, and uh, who's the fifth? And um, I can't even think of the fifth starter. Paul George, Reggie Jackson, Zubac, Morris, and then Batum as their five starters. And then off the bench, they'll probably play Hartenstein, Powell, Covington. I would think Kennard plays, and I would think Mann plays. So they're probably going to run a 10-man rotation. How much, you know, does Reggie Jackson, does he get like 40 minutes here? I don't know. Um, you know, the upside is definitely there when he does get the minutes. It's just that his minutes have kind of been all over the place this season. We've seen, we, we've still seen him have good games, though, even with Paul George returning. Those first two games that Paul George came back, you know, Reggie Jackson was pretty good in those. 34 DK points against Utah, uh, 48 DK points against the Bulls. Um, he had you know, 35 DK points against the Pelicans. I think Reggie Jackson gets like 30, 32 minutes here. It's 6,600. I don't have an issue with him. Zubac at 5,700. I'm a little bit hesitant on. He's been very consistent lately, but I will say that this is definitely a scary spot going up against Carl Anthony Towns, who is very good at drawing fouls. And Zubac is someone that, you know, kind of does get in foul trouble a lot. I think the price tag is about right for Zubac at 5,700. But if the minutes are there, he always does have an upside. The only thing that we've seen, the thing we've seen is that, you know, it's pretty much going to be like an even split between Zubak and Hardenstein. Hardenstein has played so well off the bench this year that I think he's kind of earned a backup role that's, you know, a good backup role. It's not like you're getting 34 minutes from Zubak and only 14 from Hardenstein. Normally, it's going to be like a 24-24 split. Um, so I don't have much of a preference when it comes to the centers. You know, maybe if like Zubak gets in foul trouble guarding Cat, that could lead to more minutes for Hardenstein. If you want to play that narrative, I think it's fine. But where they're priced at, 5,700 for Zubak, 5,600 for Hardenstein. Neither one looked like standout plays for me. Um, if they were a little bit cheaper, maybe I'd be interested. But I think at their price tags, you know, they're fine. Um, Marcus Morris at 5,500, kind of similar to Reggie Jackson. Like, you just never know how many minutes Marcus Morris is going to play. Some days he'll play really well and he'll get huge minutes. Some days he'll play, like, garbage and they'll play Robert Covington more. And maybe Morris only gets, like, 25 minutes. Now, at 5,500, I think this price tag is cheap enough that Morris, if he does get those 35, 36 minutes, he's got an upside to, to pay off this price tag. Obviously, the pace of this game should be really good. Um, it should be a high-scoring game. So Marcus Morris is playable. And then off the bench, like there's some guys off the bench I don't mind going to. Norman Powell at 5,400, I kind of like as a you know cheaper value option. Since he's come back from his injury, you know he has been limited. Um, played 23 minutes in his first game back against Phoenix. Then he played 22 minutes against Sacramento. They did say that they were going to up his minutes limit in that game against Sacramento. And obviously, he played less minutes than he had played before. It makes no sense, but... I would think, you know, Norman Powell probably gets decent minutes here off the bench, and he has shown that he can be really productive when he's out there. Um, he's a, you know, high usage player. He's a guy that'll play, you know, he'll run, he'll run the second unit. He'll get a lot of time um, as kind of like the main, the main ball handler, the main, you know, shot creator when he's out there. So even if we only get like 24, 25 minutes from Norman Powell, I expect those minutes to be very high usage minutes. I expect those minutes to be productive minutes as well. At 5,400, I kind of like him as a cheaper option today. Again, we don't have much value on the slate, so... Norman Powell is someone I'm kind of interested in as a cheap option. On Yahoo, he's not he's not priced as good over there. He's uh, $26, and if you look at the shooting guard position on Yahoo, you know they, you do have D'Angelo Russell for cheaper. You have Karis LeVert for cheaper. I think the price tag on Norman Powell on Yahoo is going to make him very low-owned. So on a two-game slate, I'm kind of always looking for guys I can find at low ownership that have upside. And I think you know Powell will be much lower-owned than Russell and then, uh, than LeVert. So I'm fine going to Norman Powell on Yahoo at $26, even though the price tag you know, may not be as good over there. Uh, then you have like Robert Covington, who probably gets, you know, 20, 25 minutes at 5,300. I think he's priced where he should be. I'm not super high on Covington. Luke Kennard always has an upside if he can get out hot off the bench, but how many minutes does he play here? I don't think he plays enough to really be viable at this price tag. Uh, Terrence Mann at 4,900, again, like how many minutes does he play? Probably 24 to 25. At 4,900, he might be my favorite bench, op uh, bench option outside of, um, Outside of Norman Powell, like if I had to play anyone else off the bench, it probably would be Terrence Mann. In the Batum, you know, even though Batum's going to start, like I don't think he really offers much of a ceiling at, at 4,300 to, to be worth rostering. 
And like, I don't think Amir Coffey is going to be in the rotation. I doubt anyone else is in the rotation. So that's all that I'm really looking to on the Clippers. This is definitely a tough team, you know, just because we have seen the minutes kind of be, be all over the place with it being a playoff type game. Like, do they condense the rotation? Do they maybe not play as many players? It's possible, but I would think we, we can expect really big minutes for Paul George. I think if Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris are playing well, they'll get big minutes too. But we've just seen Ty Lue really, you know, Ty Lue be fine playing his bench guys. Um, if, if Reggie Jackson's not playing well, they'll turn to Terrence Mann. If, if you know, if Morris isn't playing well, they'll give more minutes to Covington. They have other guys they can give minutes to. It's a tough team to break down, but I definitely think Paul George stands out as a really good play here. I like Norman Powell coming off the bench, um, getting all that usage. I think Terrence Mann is a you know, value play off the bench is fine too. And that's all that I'm looking to on the Clippers. So let's move on to the other side of this game with Minnesota. Looking at Minnesota here, you got Carl Anthony Towns at the top for uh, 10,300. I think Cat stands out as like the the low owned stud. Um, I think out of all the pay up options that we've talked about, KD, Kyrie, Paul George, Darius Garland, and then Cat, I think Cat will be the lowest owned of those five. I may be wrong, but I think Cat's ownership is not going to be super high. 10,300, I think, is kind of an appropriate price tag for him, if not, you know, a little bit overpriced. Towns normally, you know, when he has a good game, he normally puts up like 50, 55 DK points, which is solid. But that's not going to like win you the slate at this salary unless all the other studs fail, uh, which I would be surprised if that happens. So if you want to go to Towns for low ownership, I think it's fine. I will say that, you know, just because the center position, there's a lack of options at center. I think that's what makes Towns really stand out. Um, you know, just because outside of like Drummond and Mobley, who you can play at center. I mean, do I really want to play Zubak? Again, like I'm not super high on Zubak. Hartenstein, his price tag, I, I don't really love. Covington, I'm not on. Moses Brown doesn't isn't going to play enough. So... I think what makes Towns more appealing is just the, the the lack of options at the center position. But on this slate, he's not my favorite payup option. I think I'd rather get to some other guys. Anthony Edwards, 8300, feels priced about right. Um, his role should be really good during the playoffs. You would think, you know, in this type of game environment, he's going to play big minutes. I would think he probably gets like close to 40 minutes here. His ceiling is always there. Like Anthony Edwards can get hot, can put up a big game any night. But 8300, I think that's an appropriate price tag for him. Danger Russell at 7K. We're going to have to wait and see if he's able to play for this game. He did not play Sunday for an illness. Um, I don't know if they just sat him out just because it was a you know game they didn't really need to play him. I know they sat out Cat that day. Uh, Anthony Edwards still played, but he only played like the first half. So did Russell just sit out last game just because it was kind of a meaningless game? I mean, it's possible. I would think he's going to be ready for this uh, playing game, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, if Russell is able to play, it's 7K. Like, I think he's fine. Um he probably plays big minutes here, 35, 36 minutes. I think the price tag is about right for D'Angelo Russell. He's been really inconsistent as of late, but I will mention that over his last few games, he started to look a lot better, been more consistent, been you know putting up better games. Again, like when it comes to these Minnesota guys, when they're all healthy, Cat, Edwards, Russell, it's always tough to predict which one's going to have the big game. Since it is just a two-game slate, these guys are obviously viable, but I don't think any of one, any of those three guys stand out as like priority options for me. Um, and then the rest of Minnesota, you got Patrick Beverly at 5,200. I normally don't ever get excited to roster Patrick Beverly, uh, Patrick Beverly, but I will say that with you know the few options that we have today, Beverly probably plays like 25, 30 minutes, and at 5,200, you know he might give you 25, 30 DraftKings points, which is going to probably be good enough on this slate to to be worth rostering. Um, so 5,200 Beverly, I'm fine going to. Um, they're probably going to want his defense out there. Um, you know he's one of their good defenders, so. Beverly at 5,200 is fine. Malik Beasley off the bench. You're just going to need him to get hot. Like, how many minutes does he play here? Probably low 20s. If he can, you know, get hot from three, he's always got upside, but doesn't stand out as a top value option. Naz Reed just going to play the backup five minutes. So if you want to play Naz Reed and hope that, like, Carl Anthony Towns gets in foul trouble or something, you could maybe do that on a two-game slate. But I would expect Naz Reed just plays, like, maybe 10, 15 minutes at that. So not going to be super interested in him. I think Jared Vanderbilt is the one guy that stands out as a good value. I think Vanderbilt will be a pretty popular value option. He's only 3,900. We would you would think he probably plays like 25, 30 minutes here. Um, last game they only played you know he only played the first half, so I don't really want to look into that last game. In close games this season, we've seen Vanderbilt get around 30 minutes a night. You know he is one of their better defenders as well, so they might want him out there guarding Paul George. He's only 3,900. You know he's not the best point minute player. But I think he'll play 30 minutes, which, you know, 30 minutes at 3,900 is kind of tough to find on these on this two-game slate. Like, find me another guy at this price tag that's going to play the same amount of minutes that Vanderbilt wills. It's kind of tough. I mean, maybe Jaden McDaniels plays like 25, 30 minutes, but I doubt it. Maybe, like, I mean, really, there's nobody else down here that's going to get the minutes that Vanderbilt will, or that Vanderbilt should get. So, 
as a value option, you know, I'm trying to pay, pay up for at least one stud today just because we do have some good pay up options. I think Jared Vanderbilt is a value play is fine. 3900 on DraftKings is really cheap. He's pretty cheap on Yahoo as well. $15 over there. Um, I think Vanderbilt's a, a fine value play. He's someone I'm looking to for a cheap option. And then, you know, maybe a guy like J.D. McDaniels you could go to off the bench. He probably plays, you know, low 20s minutes at 3700 Doesn't offer a ton of upside, but we're kind of, you know, scarfing for value. So McDaniels is playable. I don't think I'm getting to anyone else off the bench, though. Like, how much does Tarion Prince play in this type of game? Probably not much. How much does Jalen Noel play in this type of playoff game? Like, probably not really many minutes. So I would think you're going to get big minutes from Cat, big minutes from Edwards, big minutes from Russell. Beverly probably plays around 30. Vanderbilt probably plays around 30. Um, Malik Beasley probably plays, you know, mid-20s. McDaniels probably plays mid-20s. Nazarene will play the backup five. And then how many other guys even get minutes? Like, they might just run an eight-man rotation, play those eight guys. Um, maybe Tarion Prince gets some minutes. But that's pretty much it for Minnesota. Um, I think that's it for this two-game slate, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to break it down, you know, as in-depth as, as I possibly could. I know for just a two-game slate, this video is kind of long. But wanted to give you my, uh, guys as much information as I could. I hope the video helped. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button as well if you have not yet. Again, go check out the sponsor of the video, Prize Picks. Go sign up for Prize Picks. Use code NOAA when you do. Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you know, me personally, I'm not the biggest fan of these small DFS slates, two game slates, three game slates, four game slates. Like that's not my that's not my cup of tea. And obviously during the playoffs, that's really all that we're gonna have. So I'm going to be switching a lot of my action over to prize picks. Now, I still, I'll still be making DFS videos every day. I'll still be playing some lineups in DFS, but a lot of my volume is going to be on prize picks during the postseason. So if you guys want to check out prize picks, you want to give them a try. Again, you can sign up with my promo code. You can take a look at their board for Tuesday's games. They even have some stuff posted for Wednesday. So you can take a look at some of the props they have up for Wednesday's games as well. It's very simple. You're just picking the over or the under on players projections. If you have a lean one way or the other, uh, lean one way or the other, you have to make at least two picks. But you can make up the five picks and you can win up to 10 extra money on prize picks. So definitely go uh, give them a try if you have not yet. But that's all that I got for this uh, two-game Tuesday slate. Hope you guys enjoy these uh, playing games. They should be a lot of fun. Um, obviously, we'll be back tomorrow to talk through Wednesday's games. We got another two-game slate Wednesday. I think it's the it's the Hornets and the Hawks and the um, the Pelicans and the, the Pelicans and the Spurs playing on Wednesday. So you know, we'll be back to talk through those two games. And, uh, and yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Best of luck tonight. And we will see you back here on Wednesday. Uh, good luck, guys. Peace.